Hello, hi, everybody. Um, I'm Mark Coleman. I'm managing editor and uh, communications director for the Graduate Institute of Hawaii, and I'm the co-host today for uh, Tom Yamachika's Talking Tax show, which tells you all about Hawaii and IRS taxes uh, for those who need to know. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, a recent Internal Revenue Service ruling from August 18th that announced expansive tax relief for Hawaii wildfire victim wildfire victims, and that would, of course, be folks on Maui and also Hawaii counties. Um, we'll go over what that means and also touch upon the relief that the state is giving and why it is so different from what the IRS is um, allowing or giving, uh, as the case may be. If time permits, we'll also discuss some track tax treatment of some of the kinds of government payments that may be made to victims or relief organizations or other helpers. So without further ado, let me introduce our co-host, Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. And also we have a guest today, Joe Kent, my colleague at the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, uh, executive vice president. And he's been on the ground on Maui uh, a number of times since the wildfire. And so he'll have some, uh, and he used to be a teacher, in fact, in Lahaina. Uh, at King Kamehameha School, uh, Elementary School, King Kamehameha the Third Elementary School, and so he has some very fond memories uh, and knows a lot of people over there. And the whole thing is just really terrible what happened. Um, so anyway, let's get to the point. Uh, Tom, you want to take it away? Or okay, Tom, what happened on August fifth, eighteenth? Uh, what the IRS say here? Okay, uh, thanks, Mark, for uh, doing this show with me. Uh, I'm, I'm Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, and uh, we're, uh, we're here to help, uh, at least get some information out to people who might need it. Um, uh, like Mark was saying, the IRS uh, came out with uh, some news on August 18th regarding uh, tax filing and payment deadlines, and uh, here's basically what they said. Um, if you have a tax filing or payment that's due between August 8th and February 15th of next year, uh, then that filing can or payment can be made on or before February 15th, 2024 without penalty. Uh, e examples given uh, in the IRS news release include uh, quarterly estimated tax payments, like there's one coming up uh, in just a little while here in September. and uh, Another is due on January 16th, 2024. If you uh, live in one of the affected counties, namely Maui or Hawaii counties, uh, if you need to, you can defer your payment until February of next year. Uh, one thing to note is that um, uh, there's no forgiveness, but uh, you still got to pay your tax, uh, but you have a little bit more time to pay it. Uh, other examples include. Um, payroll and excise tax returns. So uh, if you are an employer, uh, you get this kind of tax relief too if your business is um, located in the affected zone, namely uh, Maui and Hawaii counties, uh, then uh, you should take, take advantage of this relief. Um, if you are a calendar year partnership or S corporation whose 2022 extensions ran out on September 15th, then you can get some relief uh, as well. Same thing with calendar year corporations whose 2022 extensions ran out on October 16th, 2023. Uh, how many as people, well as, how many, Tom, how many people do you think are actually pay, paying attention to this stuff personally, or do they have accountants that, that they can just turn it over to? Well, um, it's questionable whether people are paying attention to this or not. I mean, the, the IRS uh, makes its announcements over, you know, its own website, but uh, mainstream and media probably people, don't pick it up. How many people might this affect, too? Is this like 30 people or who are in the situation of um, uh, having to file or owe between those, you know, a few months? Or is it hundreds of thousands of people? Or how many people are we talking about here? Oh, we've got lots of people. Um, we, we've got basically anybody who's an employer, you're affected. 
if you're in the in the affected counties. If you are a gig worker and you owe estimated tax, uh, or if you're like me, if you're self-employed and you owe estimated tax, um, then uh, and 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 you're uh, and you live in the affected counties, then you're affected as well, and and you are eligible for this relief. And but but the count. Uh, what, what the IRS is not saying is that we're going to reduce uh, your tax liability. It's it's just saying it's we're we're going to delay it, right? Right. So you have a you know a few more months to get your to get your money together, but but you still owe what you owe. And and did you say something about like what if happened if all your records went up in the fire? Uh, you know, if you're a business in Lahaina. Hopefully, all that stuff is on the internet, right? Or you know, on the cloud somewhere that you can you can pull it all back down if you need to for the IRS, right? Yeah, uh, for the IRS and state, uh, you know, state income tax and state GET. Uh, I mean, a lot of a lot of businesses, mine included, have uh, cloud services uh, that accounting records are backed up on, and hopefully, uh, if uh, you're a business in Lahaina or if you're in a business in one of these affected counties and your records did go up in smoke, hopefully you got a backup somewhere. Yeah. I think the word affected is important because, you know, if you're a business owner, let's say in, in uh, Hana on Maui, um, you, your business, your business is still there. You know, there's people visiting your business and everything, but it's also in a way affected by the drop in tourism perhaps. So I wonder um, how direct a connection do you have to make when it comes to saying that you're affected? Well, uh, for the IRS, they they basically uh, give relief by county. So if you are, if you live or if your business is in uh, Maui County or uh, Big Island County, uh, then you can get this relief. Uh, also, if you're on Primarily Lanai or Molokai, that's part of Maui County as well. So uh, you get relief as well, even though uh, you may not have, you know, your business may not have been swallowed up in flames. You may have your business affected if you're on Oahu too, but only if you can show it. Yes, um, if if your business was affected uh, and you don't live in the uh, affected counties, there is uh, procedures where you can like write a note on your on your return uh, or attach a statement to it saying, uh, "I I'm I was affected by the wildfire because of you know these reasons." And and by the way, if you're if you're applying for relief from the state, that's all you. I mean, that's all you can do. Um, the IRS is giving you automatic tax relief with some limitations that as I'm going to go into. The state can't, in that um, they they don't have uh, statutes that automatically go off the uh, disaster declaration, which and and the and the IRS does. So the IRS has more power to grant these extensions and relief, and, and the state is kind of more case by case. So, uh, so they the have. State, so that reminds me, I I just saw a news release from the governor's office. That he's going to be updating. He's going to be having a press conference on Friday tomorrow. Oh, excuse me, tomorrow Friday uh, about um, about. Well, he'll be having a conference today. Actually, I guess it is um, about the emergency declaration for Maui. And uh, is this an opportunity for him to extend, you know, more generous uh, situation for for taxpayers? I mean, this is an emergency, right? You say it's not automatic under the emergency declaration, but but he could say that, right? Uh, yeah, I mean the governor has emergency powers as well, um, and uh, uh, you know we saw Governor Ige uh, last session uh, use a lot of that because of the pandemic emergency. So he suspended lots of laws and uh, and and did a lot of uh, you know uh, things that normally only kings can do. <laughs> but, we know about that. Yeah, we know about that, huh? Okay, but one thing I got to point out, though, 
is that for all of these extensions that have been given, um, individuals with 2022 returns uh, basically aren't able to get the same kind of relief. And, and let me tell you why, because their payment of tax uh, was already due in April. And that was before the wildfires hit. So um, if they were an extension, fine, uh, but they still have to have uh, the proper amount of tax paid in by April. Uh, so you have to have a, a properly estimated amount of tax that was paid in by April, and the disaster declaration doesn't affect that at all. Well, are we ask, are we looking at a lot of um, people waiting in line, uh, a, a, big, a big burden on the state agencies with people coming in case by case? Wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it make sense for the governor to just say, "This is automatic. You got it. You know, you're all. You, everyone who's affected, who's in the within the the Maui County or you know Oahu, anyone who could claim that, you're you're good to go." Well, we we don't know how uh, deluged the agencies are at this point. I mean, uh, Joe, you've you've kind of looked at things on the ground. Uh, how how is it over there? Oh wow, of course. I mean, yeah. We've had a month of people in shock and disbelief. Um, there's still people in in disbelief and um, feeling like they're in midair um, with this. I know people who have lost their whole businesses. Um, businesses, uh, Lahaina Music comes to mind, which is uh, a a business that I would visit often uh, as a music teacher in Lahaina once upon a time, and uh, the whole business. Uh, and uh, the strip mall there burned to the ground, and um, they were um, trying to garner donations online. And and I think other businesses are as well. So people are just, um, you know, trying to get back to survival mode right now. Okay, well, uh, with that, maybe we should then talk a little bit about disaster relief payments. Um yeah, there there are payments that the government makes to uh, people in in this type of situation uh, that are generally excluded from gross income, which means you don't have to pay tax on them at all. Uh, for example, if you get a payment from FEMA uh, for living expenses, funeral expenses, or home rehab, uh, that is uh, considered to be uh, disaster relief payments under. Uh, the disaster relief payment section of the Internal Revenue Code. There is actually a, a section that talks about that, um, and you don't have to pay tax on it. Uh, Hawaii compl complies with that part of the Internal Revenue Code, so uh, for Hawaii net income tax, uh, you don't have to pay net income tax on that uh, on those payments either. That's like insurance or something like life insurance when you get that. Just like life insurance. Now, uh, we got different rules applying to general excise tax because that's kind of a different different beast altogether. Um, and there is, you know, the possibility of some tax relief from general excise tax, but it doesn't follow, you know, the same rules as income tax. Oh. So, for example, if you get um, a business interruption insurance, uh, you have to see whether that's you know making up for lost income, and uh, you know, because the income is is uh, is taxable for GE tax, uh, the uh, insurance proceeds might be taxable as well. You have to kind of look, look at that, uh, take stock of why your insurance was was paid, what kind of uh, what necessitated it, and uh, is it replacing income? So you have to kind of look at that. Is, there is, are is that kind of insurance. Are you saying that can be taxed? When you oh get, yeah, it, it like sometimes get it sometimes gets worse. You know, um, I had a client a long time ago uh, that was growing guavas on Kauai, and then remember Hurricane Nikki? Yeah, yeah no more guavas. Um, mm -hmm. So, so the client got uh, a payment of crop insurance, which which you know they they had paid for crop insurance, and and they got a you know good slug of cash. And uh, and they got into a fight with the state tax department because they had reported it as as wholesaling income, you know, the same as they would uh, if they were, you know, 
their their normal business because they you know they they didn't sell guavas retail they sold it to uh a wholesaler which um basically crushed it up and 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 made uh, juice out of it but the auditor quite rightly pointed out well uh there's no resale you got insurance proceeds um there's no there's no second seller so i, I got to tax all of that at retail namely four uh, percent so they have to be taxed at a higher rate in other words yeah so that was kind of an unfortunate situation fortunately uh because a uh, hurricane iniki was a was really a disaster um and and was declared as such by the state as well uh it, it turned out to be exempt you what think about it, you think it was a uh, right decision that that, that... He had to declare it as that that it had to be considered retail sale. Well, yeah, I mean, there's there was there was no second sale. What I mean, about the um, all the people who are the individuals who are getting payments um, from donations? I mean, we, we're seeing Venmo codes on uh, Facebook and um, GoFundMe campaigns, and yeah. some people getting tens of thousands um and and we've seen millions of dollars given to yeah, um, some people so you know at one what point uh, does that have to um be taxed too well th th there are kind of like two ends you have to look at one is uh the donee the the people who are getting um the donation uh that's that usually counts as gifts and gifts are not taxable for either income tax or GE. Up to uh, a certain point, or is that like? Well, if if you get into the into the millions, uh, you may get into gift tax. Um, but I don't think anybody's at that point. Okay. So that thing about giving only fourteen thousand dollars to your son or something—that's that's just a family, uh, family transfer of wealth. But if you're donating fourteen thousand dollars, I think that's the the amount to uh, a charity or you know a disaster fund. That's unlimited, and you can take a tax write-off on that even. Well, let's go into that next. Um, okay. The, the, the $14,000 are, are for gifts uh, to normally to individuals. Uh, if you give more than $14,000 to a person, you start eating away at what's called unified credit, uh, which is a, a, a very large allowance that you get uh, for uh, for gifts to like next generation and stuff like that, but uh, you oh. only get this unified credit uh, once in your lifetime, mm. so uh, you will be eating away at it, and you have to keep track of it. But that doesn't apply to most people. Um, and if if you want to write it off, then what you need to be doing is you need to be donating to a charity, because you know, gifts made to individual people, I mean, it's 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 fine, it's not taxable, but you can't write it off either. Okay. But you can write off uh donations that are made to a charitable organization if it's you know properly registered with IRS and it uh conforms with IRS rules and stuff like that. I mean we have uh in one of the pieces on our website a uh, a guide to verifying uh, some of these, uh, you know, some of these charities. Uh, there are a couple of ways you can do that. Uh, you can go to IRS directly, for example. There's this thing called Exempt Organization Search, and see if they are properly qualified. If they are, then then you can write off your donation. Mm -hmm. um, not all tax exempt organizations are eligible for this. So if you if you were to give some money to the Chamber of Commerce, for example, as a donation. That's not a charitable contribution because your Chamber of Commerce is not a charity. Okay. Oh. Um, They're like a 501c6 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, 501c6 right? instead of 501c3. That's kind of technical tax uh, geek speak for um, you know the type of uh, charity that you're allowed a personal deduction for. So if I was um, going to donate money to the uh, we, there was an article about a couple that were that raised like over two million dollars on a GoFundMe thing but the, it, the, do you think that I mean I don't know but 
would you imagine that they have registered as a 501c3 or, you know, as a charitable organization? Or is anybody who's donating to a group like that just kissing? I mean, there's no tax deduction. They're just they're just giving it away, period. Yeah, they're just giving it away. I yeah. mean, individuals are not eligible to be charities. Right. So if you wanted it, then what you'd want to do is go find a list of bona fide charitable organizations if you wanted the if you wanted the tax deduction out of that's right like the maui strong fund for example that's uh that's set up by um a hawaii community foundation and well, there, there are some others well to bring it back to the federal government and the state government regarding the tax situation do you think this is about as much as we could expect i mean i think the state probably I'm I'm wondering if the governor should step in and say, hey, forget the long lines, case by case basis. Why don't you just make it a blanket thing for anybody who can, you know, who was in that district? I think the IRS has it by zip code, right? Anybody in this zip code can can qualify. Um, maybe the state could do the same thing if they don't want to be deluged by case by case appeals. Yeah, it's, that's that's certainly possible. I mean, the governor could could uh write a disaster proclamation and uh i i think uh uh sylvia luke already did but that doesn't mean it can be like you know uh restated like you know how how, how governor Ige did every 30 30 or 60 days for the for the covid pandemic how did how did how did what did sylvia luke do uh she issued an emergency proclamation the governor, the lieutenant governor, can issue a uh, an emergency proclamation. Yeah, she was acting governor at the time because uh, oh. because because uh, Josh was away and tra traveling. Oh, oh, oh! Pardon me. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, so she didn't say anything about that about blanket. You know, no. you qualify for for postponement of having to pay your taxes. No, uh, no, that, that wasn't in there. Is that something that would have to be written into law for the future? Uh, if you, if the governor, you know, to, to relieve the governor of having to bring that up every time? I, I think that would be a good idea. I mean, we have uh, the IRS uh, with with that type of authority uh, under the Internal Revenue Code. We don't have anything comparable yet. And uh, there's, I think, uh, a good argument for, that we should have something comparable. Now, as far as getting money from the state, that's probably not going do you think that's going to happen you know uh, at relief grants like the federal government is doing giving each victim a certain amount of money each survivor well that that would be kind of hard at the state level because uh they got hurt too yes um okay. right. they they uh the the, the state facing a, a a very large loss in like the tourism related revenue as a result of of the impact to uh to west maui right. uh and a lot of a lot of tourists are like giving up on maui period uh is, is, that, is that is that what you're seeing joe well yeah the, um businesses across the county um are struggling right now and they feel that they're in a disaster and uh may have to close shop actually um the, well, you know the it's just like COVID. There's a sea of rental cars at the airport, and every rental car is a hotel room that's not being rented, and a cook that's not, you know, in a restaurant, and uh, all the wedding planners. And so it, it's a lot of people. And I'm wondering about the impact of un unemployment taxes um, and unemployment benefits, which I assume are going to be drawn down. Now, at the county level, you know, uh, during COVID, everyone sort of drew on unemployment and then we all paid more. But now uh, Maui County, I think, will be drawing heavily on unemployment, but we will still all be paying more for that. Right? Yeah, unemployment insurance is a state fund. So uh, if it gets depleted, then all employers... You know, at least if if the legislature doesn't uh, step in and do something else, uh, all employees will have to make up for it at the end of the year, uh, starting you know starting next year. And the county uh, did they reduce property taxes or or give some sort of a relief there? 
I think they're considering it. Yeah, Maui County did. I thought they did. Um, but when these, uh, this, this is a, at the state level, if they declare an emergency proclamation, is this one of those things that can drag out for years? I mean, I suppose it could, right? Well, uh, an emergency proclamation lasts, I think, 60 days. Right. But we know it, it could go along a lot longer. Yeah, it could be renewed if the emergency conditions still exist. So if they, if, so if in this emergency proclamation they say we're gonna we're gonna allow you to, um, ex I guess I'm talking about the state level here. We're gonna get, we're gonna give you a, a break on when you got to turn in your taxes, pay your taxes. Um, does that mean that that would apply indefinitely, uh, even if the uh, sixty days expires? Well, it depends on on, on what. Uh... How it's worded? Yeah, how it's worded, I think. Hmm. Well, I hope they can provide the relief that a lot of Hawaii businesses need. There are so many people in in desperate situation right now uh, because of this fire. And that's a whole subject all on its own about how it happened and you know what could we do about it. Yeah. One, one thing I did want to cover before we uh, end for today is, you know, what kind of people are eligible for the for uh, for tax relief, um, you can be eligible if you, as a taxpayer, uh, if you're a relief worker, uh, you're uh, affiliated with a government or a charity, and you're assisting in the disaster area, even though you live somewhere else. That's that's an acceptable explanation. You mentioned that if your you know records were in the in the disaster area and they burned to the ground, then yeah, that's that's a good explanation. Uh, or if <coughs> The taxpayer uh, was visiting the disaster area and was injured or, or killed, then yeah, obviously that's a good cause for tax relief as well. Uh, again, that that was uh, from the federal statute. Uh, for for uh, state relief, your, your mileage may vary because they don't have the you know, the, the same standards, but we, we would hope that they'd be similar. Well, thank you, Tom. As usual, you're the man. You the man on on the issue of taxes in Hawaii. It's un, it's incredible how much you know on this subject, and I really appreciate your advice to everyone who's going to be needing it. Um, Joe, thanks a lot for being here. Um, really good to hear from someone who's been over there and knows exactly what's going on. Until next time, Tom. Thank you very much for having me on board today. And I guess aloha, everybody, for watching. We appreciate you being here. Have a great day. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.